Hello, everyone, and welcome. Sorry, we're getting started just a couple minutes late here, but um, we're going to open up a poll and um, see who's with us today. Feel free to fill that in. We also, in the chat box, have um, the links to the app. So this is a free app um, that we're going to be talking about today. And there's the Apple link and the Google um, Play link or the Google Store link also. So if you can go to those, whichever type of phone you have and upload the app, we can walk you through some of that today. It's um, pretty amazing. We, uh, we, my family and I have been using it since uh, last week when we, when we found out about it. So it's been lots of fun. Great, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for uh, being here today. Oh, the app name is Agents of Discovery. So if you're just going on your um, into your app store, it's Agents of Discovery. And I put that in the chat box. Great, we got about 51 folks with us right now. Um, if you could fill out the survey, the poll about um, who's with us today. I'm sorry, I realize I don't have an other on there. So if you don't fall, in, fall into those categories, I apologize. Uh, Mary, if people are using their computer, if they don't have a phone access right now, is there something they should do on their computer or is it, um, is it just the app on the phone? Oh, did we lose Mary? Kendra, can you answer that question? Yeah, um, so it is just the app on the phone, but I will be screen sharing a demo. So if you can't get it on your uh, can't get it on your computer, no worries. Uh, I will be showing you kind of a walkthrough of how things work. Awesome. Thank you, Kendra. We're gonna um, go ahead and close our poll now. And I'll share those results with you just to see who's here today. Looks like we have a lot of folks in outdoor adventure education. Some environmental education people. Great. Thanks, everyone. My name is Sherry Bagley, and I am the executive director of the Association for Experiential Education or AEE. We are a community of experiential educators and hopefully you found us through today through our website or our other um, social media. We have been working very hard for the past two months in making connections and helping people find resources. Uh, our community is vast and we have a lot of great educators and a lot of folks out there who have been impacted significantly by this and so our goal has been to help people out and give people as much support and information as we can find for them. And so all our webinars have been free and our library of webinars has been made free. You can, um, if you don't know about those other webinars, you can check them out at our website, www.aee.org. It's gonna pop up there in the chat box. Um, and we're a membership organization, so you can also find out about how to join us on that, um, how to donate to us, and all our other opportunities. Um, we do have an international conference every fall, and we're looking at making that um, possibly virtual this year. And so hopefully we can get a lot of folks to attend virtually uh, that maybe wouldn't have been able to previously. So we're looking forward to getting together in November for that. And um, again, all of our webinars are available on that website, as well as lots of other information in our community resource library. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, 
Today we have the second part, although I think um, this is a standalone webinar also, but on Agents of Discovery, which is an amazing app that has been created uh, and is being given out free, and it has a huge collaboration with lots and lots of organizations, and I'm sure Mary will share um, who those organizations are today that have been working together on this app. But it is focused on getting kids and families outside and um, engaged with their technology, but also in the outdoor world. So thank you all. And we have Mary Clark, who is the CEO of Agents of Discovery with us today, as well, well as Russ Crispell, who's the Director of Outdoor Pursuits Student Life with the University at Buffalo. And I'm gonna let Mary and Russ take it away. Thank you all. Well, thank you so much, Sherry. And it is so great to be here with you this morning, this afternoon, depending where you are. Um, I am speaking to you today from the beautiful Okanagan Valley in Canada, where our headquarters are located. You can see behind me here, I've set up a virtual backdrop so you can see, lucky me, where I live in the Okanagan. And this critter next to us is Erwin Otter, who is the head agent of Agents of Discovery. So, and Russ, it looks like you're in, not at the University of Denali. I mean, university, you're at University you know, I, of Denali today. That's correct. Well, I actually, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to be in Alaska right now. Okay. And so you're, you're, tragically, due you're to Alaska COVID, uh, my trip was postponed to next year. So uh, <laughs> I had 18 years in a row and this one uh, sort of got me. Okay, so well, I, virtual I to Alaska isn't quite as good, I'm sure, but I, I, I'm not sure how many of you joined us last week. We were talking with our, with um, Misty Mitchell, who is the Director of Conservation with the Johnny Morris Foundation, and that was focused very much, and I, Sherry, you mentioned your family is enjoying playing the missions. I'm assuming that's mission conservation. Great, and that's a collaboration with Bass Pro to bring uh, the wonders of wildlife, and they do, it's aptly named, they have an amazing facility, uh, global uh, wildlife conservation that they are now bringing uh, into people's homes through mission conservation, and you can check that out um, under, you know, I'm sure, Sherry, you could perhaps send the information about that to everyone. But today our focus is on geo-triggered missions. And geo-triggered missions are those that are actually, instead of being triggered by an image, uh, the, the challenges are unlocked by where uh, the player is. And so we're going to get into this today. We're gonna to do some demos. Um, but Russ Criswell is, is a, a leader um, in outdoor recreation. I'm sure a lot of you already know him, very distinguished environmental educator who, as you can see from the photo, often goes to Alaska and has led many groups there. So I would like to um, introduce uh, Russ Crispell. He is going to uh, sort of introduce the platform to you, uh, speaking very much from a non-techie background and help you understand how this tool can hopefully uh, be of assistance to you as you strive to make your outdoor education uh, more relevant more compelling and you know we're trying to make it easy for you to to really put your content into an ar game okay so take it away russ thanks yeah well welcome everyone uh i apologize for uh the fact that i don't have a, a beautiful backdrop here but i guess denali will will suffice um yeah i just want to give you a quick background uh i have been working at the university of buffalo for the last 30 years uh, I, I i will make sure it's known that I am officially retired from the University of Buffalo as of this past fall, or actually late fall. And uh, I'm still involved with a number of different projects there. And one of which is uh, still trying to uh, see how we can really implement agents of discovery at the University of Buffalo. Uh, it started several years ago at a conference that I had attended, where I saw the you know, this agents of discovery, so bio on it, and a nice little descript. And I said, you know, this would be a pretty cool thing. I wonder what this is about. And uh, to be honest, I am absolutely not a tech person. And so I attended the, the presentation that Mary had put on. And we went from quickly from theory 
And we then went outside and we started using this this uh, platform. And of course, I you know being I, so I don't understand this app. Mary kept saying, "Well, this is the, this is actually a platform that you use." And so I was trying to grasp the concept of what this actually did, uh, because I'm always inquiring about about things like that. And so, um, so yeah, so that's a few years ago, and uh, the last few years. We've done a variety of different projects at the University of Buffalo in uh, collaboration with Mary. And uh, I'll get into that a bit. Uh, just to give you an idea real quick that, I, you know, I am an outdoor outdoor guide. I, you know, backpacking, camping, canoeing, kayaking, whitewater rafting. That's what I do as a background. I'm an educator. Uh, I teach also at the Niagara County Community College and I advanced first aid and, uh, you know, CPR, wilderness first aid, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, this technology aspect is something that is somewhat new in terms of uh, embracing it. And yet, um, I guess what, what sort of drew me to it was, you know, I was at the, our boat dock, we have a lake on campus. And I, while this is a few years ago, I was sitting there watching people walk around with their phones. And they're just like, almost, I, I want to say zombie-like in their searching and questing to try to grab something. And I couldn't quite understand what the heck that was. Well, what they were was they actually playing a game called Pokemon Go. And that was like, okay, I, I try to understand. So they're, they're doing these things. And so obviously uh, it was intriguing to see a whole plethora of people that I hadn't ordinarily had seen in the outdoors wandering all over our campus. And of course, so many of you have read about some some people have walked in the walls, people have walked in the trees. And you'll find as uh, Mary will go through this and explain it a lot better than I am, that uh, the way this is this particular platform is designed is that the folks that actually control uh, the platform have a mechanism of actually sort of providing a, a, a wonderful safety net so it keeps people on trail, not going off trail. Keep the people, keep people in a direction that you want them to go in, rather than just wandering. So, just real quickly, um, we've we've sort of gone through a quick. I mean, I don't know if you all know what AR really is. That's augmented reality. And again, I, I'm a um, I'm an unpaid person with agent. I have no financial connections. Uh, I'm not Senator Burr from North Carolina, not to get in, but, you know, I, I don't have any stock in agent of discovery. I'm just doing this from an educational perspective, and I really think this is a, a pretty awesome tool, particularly as we uh, move into post-COVID-19 um, circumstances. It, it, it definitely will help you uh, do some programming, and that's something we're looking at right now at the University of Buffalo, is to how we can expand uh, programming educational programming for our uh, faculty, students, and staff, and yet do it in a socially distant uh, capability. And I think this is a, a platform that will, will definitely deliver that particular thing. So getting back to what agent of uh, what um, augmented reality is, is the best way to describe it. If you've ever watched a football game on TV and you you know that they have six yards before you get a first down and all of a sudden it's like, green line appears right across the uh, uh, the, the field. Well, that, that's what AR is. It's where you interject a digital image onto a real life image of something that's going on. And, uh, you know, that would be an example. Or if you've watched any of the Olympics where you watch the swimmers trying to break a world record and they have a this, this, this line that's somehow magically appearing as the person is like swimming across, that line is following you, and that would be the world record line. The other line would be where that person is. And uh, that's the beauty of what augmented reality provides. And so that's first thing to basically just give you an idea of what that is. All right, it's a simple combination of real and virtual, which is computer generated worlds. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, the second thing is the difference between you have a geo trigger mission, that's through obviously. Um, GPS connected and then you have an image recognition which is where you just actually print out an image and then you uh, display it and then they would scan that image 
and that would allow to open up the various uh, components of a mission. And I probably, Mary, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, or I, I, again, this is coming from a from a uh, end user perspective. Yeah. And that's why, and, and I don't know, if I'm, I'll just one more thing before I turn back to you, uh, Mary. Uh, last year, we actually, Mary and I met in Spokane at the uh, ARAEE conference, and we gave a presentation on this, and that went absolutely fantastic. And so um, it's it's real world, and, it, and uh, people are really embracing it, and I'm wholeheartedly uh, endorsing it, and I'm an unpaid spokesperson in this regard. So, Mary, uh, you want to go on to a little bit more about AR? Well, the only thing I would add about image um, recognition is that it doesn't have to be a printed out image. I mean, the level of sophistication now, like at um, the Bass Pro Wonders of Wildlife Museum, we're actually using 3D objects now to trigger the experiences. So an image can be quite a broad range of things. And we're not going to be delving into image triggered missions. We did that last week. But that that's the only thing that I would add is that when you think of image triggered, it's triggered by an object, an image, it kind of like a, a modern QR code, what QR codes were in the 90s. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I, the other thing just to mention, uh, you know, my, my affiliation with AEE, I, I've been a member uh, also, uh, and I go back to be, having actually been the president of AOR going back many years ago, hosted the national conference at, at the University of Buffalo. And uh, recently we've done a number of things. I actually created a backpackers tutorial using uh, augmented reality, using agents of discovery in a set of woods that we had there and students would go by uh, throughout the woods. Uh, they would uh, upload the, this app, it's free, and they would actually learn a lot about basic fundamentals of backpacking uh, through a walk in the woods, which was pretty cool. So uh, I think um, the other thing to mention is I'm, pardon? You won an award for that. Oh, uh, well, yes, as a matter of fact, we did. Uh, just recently, uh, uh, SORP, which is Society of Outdoor Recreation Professionals, has a, uh, uh, an award for project excellence. And just recently, uh, we submitted a uh, the project for acknowledgement recognition, and we won a award between the Agents of Discovery, the U.S. Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, and also the University of Buffalo. So that's pretty exciting. So you get an idea that uh, this this is something that will be great. I even just recently presented uh, this concept with some a local boy scout troop and uh the leaders were went absolutely ballistic they thought it was fantastic and in particularly in, with this covid 19 they're trying to find ways to get people outdoors try to find ways to maintain social distance and this program is uh this platform is really uh doing some remarkable stuff so mary i th i think at this point um we were going to show the uh home page slideshow I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Kendra can share that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I don't know, Mary, if you wanted to talk a little bit about this particular, uh, this is the the uh, the actual uh, home page of Agents of Discovery. And just uh, one other thing to let you all know is that uh, uh, Mary and I are involved with some collaborative research between us and a university in England and uh, between meaning us meaning the University of Buffalo University in England and we're examining uh, it's uh, the benefits of how this is an effective learning tool for various levels of students and I will say agents of discovery has been embraced by a lot of young young kids that you just can't believe I mean, they're better than I am in, in doing this particular uh, platform. But, uh, you know, this can range anywhere from, from an elementary school level all the way up through college, which we've done. So uh, it's an exciting opportunity. And I hope all of you out there have had the opportunity to upload the, uh, the uh, app on your phone, because later on in this uh, presentation, we're going to be going through a whole variety of 
of uh, some pretty neat things. So Mary, I'm gonna turn this over to you a little bit about the uh, the actual website. Okay, excellent. Well, well, thank you for that, Russ. And Sherry, are there any questions at this point before we sort of do a little bit of a deep dive on the back end of this? Um, okay. Somebody was hoping that we would be able to share Russ's contact info. Uh, so if Russ, you're comfortable with that, you can add it to the chat. But other than that, I think we're good to go. No, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my name to my uh, email address. Oh, that's a great idea. Thanks. Look at me, I'm, I'm, uh, Mr. Non Tech, actually doing something. <laughs> well, it's pretty great. You have a virtual background, Russ. That's it. That's impressive. <laughs> good Thanks. <job. laughs> okay. Well, um, I, I'd like to just show you a little bit of how you can set up uh, your own missions. Uh, Sherry opened this by by stating that we were an app, and Sherry, I don't want to make you feel bad, but we're, we're an app is one third of what this is. This is actually a digital learning platform that enables you to instantly publish into the app or Play Store, and it can be very valuable. Um, now with this crazy COVID landscape we're dealing in, things changing all the time, to be able to quickly and easily get into people's phones so that you can deliver their message since they seem to be looking at their screens a lot as Russ was pointing out. Uh, if you can be on their screen, uh, that can be a very important part of your toolkit. So I'm going to show you the back end, which is where you create uh, your missions, which a mission is, is like a, a game, an augmented reality game that your learners play to learn whatever it is that you want them to learn. And these are created on a dashboard, which as soon as you have your login info, you can get into, do you see where it says Mission Maker Login? They're right on the home page of the, the website. And Kendra's gonna just click on that for me, Mission Maker Login, which is what you would do. Now, we have a super user account, so it's going to be just a little bit more complicated than what you would normally see. You would see your own missions and your challenges, and at the back end, uh, you get your statistics. And of course, it's very nice to be able to get analytics. Uh, in the past, it's sometimes been hard to know, you know, when it comes to signs and things, how many people have actually read them. Um, but at the back end, you're able to check and see how many users you've had, um, you get slightly different analytics depending if your players have logged in or not, but most players do play as a guest in, in parks, and even if they just play as a guest, you get aggregate data, which tells you how many downloads you've had, how many users, uh, how far they've walked, which you know can be, can be valuable information. So, um, sorry about that, my phone's ringing here. Okay, so we're going to go in and just just to show you how actually dynamic this is, we're gonna go in and just take a look at New York State Park since Russ is in the state of New York. And this is the mission we're gonna look at is actually called the Whirlpool State Park Stroll, which I think Russ is kind of close to where you are. But just to, this, this is um, the, the New York State Parks. We have a lot of state parks in New York participating as you can see. And I, I'm just gonna, tell you it was very interesting because we were originally going to demonstrate clay pit ponds in Staten Island uh, as they had Kendra's pointing it out they had one image triggered mission and one GPS mission and since we're talking about GPS today we were going to demo that but overnight they have converted it to image triggered which I said to Russ earlier as we were preparing that is a good story to tell you all just to show you how versatile this is so if for some reason your site is closed or you want to bring your content to learners at home you simply can convert your mission into an image triggered mission in in just seconds well Clay Pit Ponds did it overnight. So we're now pivoting and we are going to the Whirlpool State Park Stroll. And Russ, I think you've done this mission. Do you want to chat a little bit about, I think you've been out there and played this? Well, it, yeah, Whirlpool State Park is is uh, one of the oldest state parks in, in America. The, it's a pretty spectacular place. Obviously, it's where uh, uh, Niagara Falls dumps into and uh, you have uh, boat rides and such. But you, as you can see, uh, what, and this is, and just to give you an idea, uh, this similar to what we experienced when we set up the 
uh, mission in Spokane, uh, just prior to our presentation, I noticed that there was a, 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 a problem that I had. And so I quickly got a hold of you know, Mary and we, we looked at this. And while we were actually in the presentation, we actually moved various uh, components of this of the mission and adjusted it. So uh, the the beauty of this is that it's it's so live that uh, it's not like it's it's something that you can't adjust at any time. It was fantastic. So as an example here, here people will take a leisurely stroll around the Whirlpool, Whirlpool State Park and answer a variety of questions and different different kinds of uh, of components. So it, it's a it's an exciting thing, and from, from an educational standpoint, uh, nothing beats being able to get kids outdoors. And uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes you have to find ways to entice kids. And I don't think we're ever going to get to the point, you know, being an outdoor educator. I don't think we're ever going to get to the point where where we're going to, especially this day and age, remove technology. It's something that they're going to have in their hands. Um, you know, I I I been taking people all over the all over the country all over the world let's put it that way and you know uh you know it, it's the uh, take a picture of me here take a picture of me there and instead of just taking pictures here you have an opportunity to use the technology and expand the the understanding of what that particular area that you happen to be discovering i mean i i, I came across an agents of discovery when i took my group last year to alaska it was in the Chugach State Park uh, system. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. It's all over. So uh, Mary, go ahead. Keep going on this uh, mission. Yeah, thanks, Russ, because I know you've walked around here and it's a favorite spot of yours. So so this is, you can see that um, Kendra is going to show you the drop down here um, and where you can select what kind of mission you want to create. And a GPS mission will be triggered by the location of the player. And we'll show you that in a little bit more detail in a minute. Or you can do a trigger mission, which can be either QR codes. We do have QR available um, or images, as we've discussed earlier. So it's as simple as simply selecting the type of mission you want to create in that drop down. And once you've done that, you're ready to go. This is a GPS um, mission. And so the players are going to have to walk around and get within this, the geofence to unlock the challenges. And as we scroll down, we can see they've done a nice welcome agent. Your mission today is to discover new and exciting facts about Whirlpool State Park. Uh, we're going to, they've added some directions. Let's just see if they've got a reward just for fun. We'll scroll down. And there's their beautiful um, thumbnail image and a beautiful, uh, that's their landing page image that looks like the whirlpool is, is this park yeah, above right. or below the falls ruts oh it's below the falls below the falls yeah very beautiful image anyways you can add a reward for your players once they've completed the mission you can give them a digital reward all kinds of opportunities our goal is simply to give you lots of options so you can do what you'd like and we'll just take a look at the map so you can see because russ you were talking earlier about how we when we were in Spokane, had to move some of the challenges. We had kind of an unfortunate situation where we had placed one of the challenges right where a homeless guy had set up in the, the park in Spokane. So we had to move <laughs> that. So, so to move challenges, you just tap on, you just touch them and drag them just like you would. And, you know, Kendra can just demonstrate that, just moving them a little bit. We'll put them right back. But you just drag them. Now you can see that that red line is the geofence of your mission. And Kendra, if you can zoom out just a little bit, that is, so you, you can see if you are in the right side of the parking lot, you're actually not going to be able to play the mission. You'll see that it's there. It'll be in your mission list, but you're going to get an out of bounds message. That's because you're outside of the geofence that New York State Parks has set up for this mission. Now you can adjust your geofence for your mission in seconds. You just grab the corner of it. And Kendra, if you want to do this, yeah, and just pull on it and you can make it larger or smaller. What, so it's all about what you want. If you want your players to be in a certain area, which clearly New York State Parks wants them right at the trailhead here, uh, then you can set your geofence accordingly. And then each challenge that is in the mission also has a geofence. And that is called a scan radius. 
So if you want to just click on the scan radius, Kendra, and I can't see it on my screen, but I hope you can oh, see yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the scan radius, let's go down and see what it said at, Kendra. I, it looks like um, 104 feet. So they have set, that's a pretty big scan radius. You can go down as small as five feet. So that's the geofence for your challenges. So that means that once the player is inside that blue line, they can unlock that particular challenge. So I hope that, Russ, do you want to put that yeah, in your well, that Yeah, the sense. beauty, of, I, I would say from, from my standpoint, what we've done, this allows with that, you have the geofence, number one. So now it's, it's controlled. The people who are doing, using this platform, they got their phone out or their tablet, and they're walking around and they're actually doing the challenges. It sort of contains them within that within that boundary. And for me as an educator, how I've used this, like for instance, our backpacking tutorial, uh, we kept all of these challenges on trail, and we kept the geo uh, the um, um, oh gosh, see Mary, there there you go. You the blue lines. Yeah, geofence. Yeah, you're good. Well, I got the geofence, but the blue lines represent what? This, well, it's called the scan radius, but really Thank you. It's, the scan it's, radius. Yep, I, it's, it's my brain. But the scan radius, what that allowed everyone to do, is we kept it fairly tight because what it what it what it meant was that we weren't having people wandering all off trail. So, as an example, you know, we used one of our challenges was can you identify this particular plant, and what it was was a poison ivy vine that just went right up the tree and we actually had it so it wasn't right there yeah. but it, what the neat thing is is that with me being able to control what I how I put the challenge down as and how yeah. I make the challenge yeah. I was able to also put out a warning please do not touch this plant and we made it we which which gives you the person who was the educator an incredible amount of control as to how you want this set up and what parameters you have for your participants. And, uh, you know, we, we've done this, like I said, we've done this for college students. We're going to, uh, we're actually looking right now, uh, because of COVID, we have a tremendous need for adding recreational programming on campus. And so my dialogue I had last night with a couple of, uh, uh, folks from this, our student staff uh, association that they feel that Agents of Discovery would be a great uh, tool to help expand socially distanced recreation on campus. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so that, that's, this gives you an example of what we can do. Yeah, and, and I think that's a really important point is that this really clearly does support um, social distancing rest. Because you know, you're, it's a self-guided exploration, but whoever is setting up the mission, if that's the park manager or the educator who's using a local green space, is controlling the message and the player experience. But the players themselves are socially isolating, they're using their phone and they're simply exploring an area and having fun and, and learning. Yeah, I'll even interject that, uh, you know, it's not as pretty as Whirlpool State Park, but our campus, um, we had actually displayed this particular program, uh, not program, the platform. Uh, and the uh, Dean of Engineering was uh, enamored by this concept. And so uh, there's been dialogue about setting up Agents of Discovery as a self-guiding tour of all of our engineering departments uh, as well. And just recently, I actually spoke with uh, our um, per, the, the administrator in charge of our brand new Buffalo Medical Campus, and he, he's going to uh, look into into using this as a self guiding tour because he said he's tired of giving tours yeah. of our brand new campus, and he can actually set this up right on right in downtown Buffalo, and literally allow people to say, hey, upload this app and. You get get a self guided tour of the Buffalo Medical Campus. Frees up a lot of staff. Yeah, it it, it really does, and we, we love all our environmental educators, and we have never wanted this to be something that would in any way replace uh, people. 
we want educators to be able to use this as a tool in their toolkit just to be able to reach people and and engage them and you know Russ it's interesting because I know we're doing a lot of work with California State Parks and they literally have parents now saying to their rangers do you have a self-guided option because my child would prefer to do that than come on a ranger tour and be in a group and this is before COVID uh, and I, I can't explain that but but they're saying they're seeing a lot of that that people just prefer self-guided they can do it in their own time, their own space. Yeah. So yeah, being a guy that I think they, they get tired of my dad jokes. <laughs> so. They don't have to hear your jokes. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we all have them, right? Yeah. So. Okay. So next, um, I wanted to show you, let's go in and take a look at the actual challenges. So each one of those little markers is a different type of challenge. And you can see that there's all different types each each one is different and represents a different type of challenge that you can create um, so we're going to go in and view the challenges and just kendra will scroll down i think they have how many do they have in this mission oh they have 10 10 challenges um, and as kendra scrolls down you can see they show up in the right in large and you can edit them click the edit button you can publish and unpublish them um, yeah so we thought it might be fun today. Kendra is uh, going to do a demo. The, the one she has highlighted right now is called Monarch Butterflies and it's an augmented reality catch. So this is actually like a true, this is Pokemon Go. Only instead of catching uh, Pokemons, you are, and I don't know, I'm sure some of you played Pokemon Go, you're actually uh, catching, um, I think it's butterflies. So Kendra, if you wanna go ahead, Kendra's going to demonstrate it on her phone and um, then we'll we're actually going to try to sort of guide you through opening this up on your own phone but we'll we'll just show you this first this is an augmented reality so an AR catch and Kendra has connected her phone to the screen hey um, so hopefully you guys can hear me and see the screen that's up on the phone here. Um, I'm super excited to share this mission with you guys today. Um, as you can see, I've got the Agents of Discovery app downloaded on my mobile device. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And uh, if you're following along here, I'm going to do my best to go kind of slow so you uh, get the chance to keep up. Um, and here, uh, the most important thing that I'm going to do right now, because I'm not actually at Whirlpool State Parks, is I'm going to turn on preview mode just so I get the chance to see uh, see the mission and actually play through the challenges without having to be there in person. Um, the whole point of a GPS mission is to be there in person, but for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, I'm just gonna show it to you like this. So uh, here we see the Agents of Discovery logo. Um, I'm going to put my thumb on it and I'm going to hold it down for a couple of seconds. And now you can see that preview mode has been enabled. Uh, so if you do that on your own phone, you'll be able to view it in preview mode as well. And I'm going to go ahead and click on missions. That, 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 this is the cheat to let you in since we don't have time to go to the park. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little bit far to travel for most of us right now. Um, okay, so now that we're in the preview mode, I'm going to search up Whirlpool. Uh, Whirl cool state park stroll. So you can see that this has the play button on it. Um, you might see a cloud with a little arrow uh, on your own device. Um, mine has the play button because I've already downloaded it. So if you hit the cloud, it should download for you. I'm going to go ahead and tap the play button. There we go. And it's showing me our lovely loading screen, uh, which has been set up by the people at Whirlpool State Park. And here's Agent Chipmunk. Welcome, Agent. Your mission today is to discover new and exciting facts about Whirlpool State Park. Are you ready? Let's go. And I'm going to tap down here to continue. It's going to give me this out of bounds message because, like I mentioned, I'm not in New York at Whirlpool State Park. Um, so I'm just going to tap to continue here. Now, uh, as you can see, we can't see the challenges yet. But if I click on this little eye icon up here, it'll show me the preview challenges. So I'm going to click it. And there we go. Um, so, uh, like we saw in the Mission Maker, all of our challenges are placed along this trail. So when someone is playing using GPS, they'll be able to walk around the trail and see uh, all of these challenges pop up on their screen as they go. 
we can see all of them right now because we're in preview mode. And I'm going to zoom in over here. Um, and this, this purple icon right here um, will be our AR catch. And that's the, that's the challenge I'm going to be playing with you guys today. Uh, so when I tap on it, we're going to wait for a second for it to load. Maybe a couple seconds. There we go. So it's going to show me this agent brief uh, and give me a little bit of information about the monarch butterfly. Yeah, that's just, that's the butterfly wings. <laughs> yeah, um, I thought I had a way to get rid of this one. Just turn your volume down a little bit, yeah. If I just turn my volume down on my phone. That'll do it. Yeah, not off, but yeah, that that's the, the volume. That's supposed to be butterfly wings, but they can be a little loud. <laughs> it, it's a little loud over the presentation. It's a lot better when it's just audio coming out of your phone. Um, yeah. Anyway, so here's a little bit of information about the monarch butterflies. And now when I close it, okay, so this is the fun part. Welcome to my house. Um, this is my home office. I am looking for some butterflies in this area. Where are they? Here they are. Okay, so when I throw this, um, you'll see now it says one out of five. I've caught one butterfly. This AR catch challenge is the challenge we have that's most similar to Pokemon Go. Um, it's just, just fun for the kids to play. Oop, missed on that one. Okay, got it. Yay. So as you can see now, it's giving me this notification uh, saying, Monarch adults are attracted to a variety of flowers, but milkweed is essential for the next generation. Uh, so I've learned something and I've earned three bees. So this is kind of our prize. Um, and we close it. Okay, great. And you'll see the bees that I've earned and you'll see the check mark on the challenge marker right there. Um, so there's all kinds of different challenges. Uh, we like the AR catch and we have one other AR type challenge uh, where, uh, where players answer a question uh, and the, the answers all float up in bubbles around their head. Um, they, they get to select those answers. So there's options to make this uh, really educational and also include uh, fun little games like AR Catch. Uh, and I think that's everything from me. So back from And just before you close that, mm -hmm. you'll notice the leaderboard for the player at the top. Uh, they can always tap on the avatar that will help them. They, they, each mission has their own avatar. And then on the right, um, Kendra has now collected three bees uh, and she has done one out of the 10 challenges that New York State Parks has put into this particular mission. So yeah, thank you very much. And Kendra, if you click on the I uh, on the top right, then everyone can see all the different types of challenges that are available. The little I behind the word stroll up on the top right hand corner there. Yeah, so this is the different types, as Kendra was saying, there's AR catch, AR picker, sound matchers are nice if you're wanting to introduce, um, you know, young, young birders paying attention to, to bird calls. Uh, detective challenges, you can do 50-50 with image or text. Uh, you can do checklists with image or text. Color pickers, if you want them to learn field marks, um, potentially, so scavenger hunt, it, yeah. So, so those are the different types. It gives you a sense of the different types of experiences that you can create. Thank you so much, Kendra. That was great. And if you'd like, um, if you have the mission uh, downloaded onto your own device, uh, now we have shown you how to activate the preview mode. Uh, and that allows you to unlock challenges at any location. Uh, you can go ahead and, and do that on your own. You just hold your finger as Kendra demonstrated over the Agents of Discovery logo on that landing page, and then the challenges will unlock for you when you go into the missions. Okay, now Kendra, if we can go back to the mission maker, I want to just demo one more thing, and then Russ and I want to take your questions. And yeah, I just want to just, uh, yeah, Kendra, not, not to put pressure on Kendra, but if you get a chance and you see any Q&As, I've been trying to answer some of the Q&As and chats 
Uh, but there are some technical questions I can't answer. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to those in ju just a moment. Yeah, no, that's fine. I want to demonstrate one just... more thing on the back end. Yeah, and thanks, Russ. Yeah, I see there are a few. I, I can do, should we do those right now, Russ? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you want to click on them, you can probably uh, give an idea can of the I answer. Can in Hebrew in the app? Is that the question? That's one. Um, we currently have, Kendra, do you want to just demo the, the settings? You can do your, you could create a mission in Hebrew. Uh, we don't have a complete conversion of the entire experience into Hebrew. At this point, we have French, um, Spanish, and English available. So you can, your players can have a complete Spanish, French, or English experience, unfortunately. At this point, we do not have a Hebrew option. Of course, we would love to. Um, I, I think, um, yeah, I think Israel's a fantastic market for this. So that, that's a great question. But if, if you click on the settings, um, are you able to bring that up, Kendra, on the, the landing page? And if you open settings, there is a language drop down, and then you can select. Um, so yeah, you just on that landing page, click on settings and then click on the language drop down and you can see there's English, Spanish or French. So if we click on French, then everything is going to go to French. So the player, if they, if they are French speaking, can enjoy their entire experience. The mission that you create, you do your content then in French and everything is in their, their language. So our, we do hope to add many, many languages over time, but at this point, those are the only three that we have available. That's an excellent question. And that, and Mary, that, let me interject. That that would be coming from a from a GPS uh, component, correct? I mean, if you, they were to use um, QR codes, there can be the mechanism for them to be able to tap into a QR code that translates. Because I know that's that's an issue that uh, Whirlpool State Park uses a lot of QR because they're able to almost instantaneously convert everything over into a home language because we have such a international visit visitations at the at the parks mm -hmm. so that that's a stopgap until you're able to continue the you know getting all of those languages yeah. up on board yeah. yeah yeah when we have a number of sites rest that are that have GPS that are promoting, like El Pueblo in downtown Los Angeles does virtually everything in Spanish. So all of their signage associated with their mission is in Spanish and people are directed to down, to switch to Spanish when they open the app. Does that kind of answer what you're? I believe so, yes. Asking, Russ? <laughs> okay. Um, can you show how to create experiences via images for places that are currently closed? Um, I would like to create, um, yes, um, we can show you, and Kendra, if we go into editing a challenge, um, and somebody saying, mine keeps crashing after I press the icon above missions. Um, I think, Janet, if you're trying to Check that you have, um, it's important, if any of you have downloaded the app before, the most recent version is 5.2, you need 14 or 16, so make sure you have a recent version. Um, maybe if you send me a little bit more information, I can help you troubleshoot that, Janet. Um, but the, in order to add images, if we, let's go in, um, Kendra, we'll just click on, editing a challenge let's take a look at this baby bird one so let's say you want to change a picture you click on edit and you'll go down here to you can see in this one they have um birds know when they're ready to leave the nest and there's a little bit of copy there oh let's go up to the top Kendra, the pre-challenge, yeah. Baby birds are learning how to fly are called fledglings. Okay, and if you see the image there, now mine is unfortunately blocked here by the, hang on just a sec, I gotta put this in a different, if you go ahead, I'm just gonna minimize. If you go ahead and click on the three dots, and then what you can do to change your images, we have an API, like a 
data interface with Encyclopedia of Life, which is Harvard University's repertoire of uh, biodiversity images and audio. So if you click on EOL, um, or you can use your own images just by choosing a file off of your computer, just save a picture somewhere and download it. But if we go into EOL, this might be a valuable thing to just demo. And you could, if you want to, yeah, we could search for keywords, I guess, if we want to look for birds. If we wanted a bird image, we can click, and the media type can be image or audio, and you just search. And this will take you right into Harvard's database, and then pull the images, and then you can go through and click on one that might be useful to you. It will show you how that will appear, so we'll just click on one of them, Kendra, and it will show you how it will crop into the player experience. If you can click on one of those images, yeah. Sure. And so you can crop it to where you want it. Click select. Just click select, Kendra. We won't save this. And then it will instantly uh, replace the image that you've got. So it's very easy to change images. If something comes up, it literally can be done in, in seconds. So I, I hope that's sort of answering the question. But I, I did want to just very quickly um, show you the library. If we can go back, Kendra, to the, the challenges. And if you don't want to create your own challenges or don't have time, you can go into the challenge library and you just click on challenge library like Kendra is doing at the top there. And the simplest way to search the library is simply, do you see in the search on the right, you can enter any word, let's say oceans is just as an example or just something simple and it will pull up all of the challenges that are linked to oceans. There's gonna be for a common word like that, there's gonna be dozens. And then you can scroll down, um, just scroll down through the challenges. Kendra, click on Ocean Ridge. We'll just go down and take a look and you can see them showing up on the right. And if there's one that you like, just click the add button. So let's add swimming in the Pacific Ocean, click add. We won't save this, but boom, it'll instantly show up into your map for you. And then you drag it to where you wanna place it. I click done and you are done. So to pick place and publish from the library, you can do that in seconds. There's about uh, 12,000 challenges now in the library. So, you know, there's especially if it comes to anything in life sciences, you'll find there's lots of content in there that might be helpful for you. So I hope, I hope that that um, kind of answers the, the question. I'm having trouble finding specific missions. I got to the review enabled stage, but not seeing any missions coming up. So if we enter signs in English, they say that way we'd have to enter a new one. Boy, Laurel, I'm a little bit confused. Um, but if you're having trouble finding a mission, the, the default is set on um, geolocation. So the way the, the algorithm is set so that you'll be able to see all the missions in order of proximity to where you are within 200 miles of your current location. So the default for locating missions is based on geolocation. But if you're searching for a specific mission like we were today, the Whirlpool, then you just enter the name of the mission in the search bar and it will come up. There are also questions in the Q&A in addition to those in the chat. Okay. Um, can you help us? Oh, trying to follow the country GPS. Yeah, your GPS. If you're doing a GPS mission, uh, Lorelai, you do have to have location services enabled on your phone and they should be on. But if once in a while we do um, have to help people turn on the location services in their device. Um, you need those on for a whole variety of things. So yes, you need your, your um, location services on your mobile phone turned on. Okay, um, Sherry, can you help us with the questions that are in the Q&A? Because I'm, I'm, yeah, thank um, you. Robert is asking, do you have to own the physical site where a mission is based? No, <laughs> Niantic published Pokemon Go around the world, didn't own a single thing. At this point, that's one of the great things of, um, you know, augmented reality is you can drop a mission really anywhere. Great. Um, so that that's kind of, yeah. 
Great, that answers the next question, which is, I am in India, can I create a mission here? So. <laughs> They can be yeah, I think the neat th the neat thing is that you can make you can create a mission there, or literally I think Mary's sitting in British Columbia right now with a nice backdrop. Uh, <laughs> uh, she could make a mission in India from British Columbia. Oh, yeah. yeah, well you can once you have your license you can you can put missions anywhere in the globe. And we didn't show you that, but it's simply an API with a premium version of Google Maps. So you you enter the address or even you know, usually you can honestly just put in the name of the place if, and it will instantly pull up in your map. And then you can set your geofence. Remember that red line? Just by double clicking, you can set your geofence uh, right. and, and publish yep. that will be the geofence for your mission wherever you want it anywhere. Yeah, yeah so last year when we were doing that, we were at the conference, I had contacted Mary and said, listen, um, I identified a location of where I wanted the for us to have it just outside of the conference center and Mary and her team made the mission right in that area uh, that's where we ended up when we when I arrived I realized the geofence we didn't want to disturb the homeless individuals so we moved some of the challenges <laughs> but it was pretty cool I mean the, and the beauty of it from my standpoint was it showed that we were we had so much uh, option and flexibility. Um, that's what I. That's the one thing I love about this particular platform. Well, that's honest. what people need, and I mean, COVID has underscored that. I think, but it's such a dynamic world, and you know, static signs are not really meeting the needs of you know what what interpreters need. We've got to be able to move things and you know, with things like climate change coming down the pipe, I feel that it's very important to have something that's very dynamic and, and reduces people's stress so that you click and drag. I mean, is how nice is that? I can move this by just clicking and dragging it in seconds. It, it uh, is the kind of tool in a stressful kind of world that we hope will make people, you know, feel less stressed. Yeah, I, I'd like, I, one thing I wanted to mention, um, when I'm, out leading a group into the back country. And I don't know how all of you all feel, but to me, I wanna see nature, right? And what I don't wanna see are, you know, we have a place in Western New York that is absolutely spectacular, it is gorgeous. It's a hidden gem, it's advertised as a hidden gem, so now it's no longer that hidden gem. But they've had, they have probably heading down to this uh, this grotto where it's called the eternal flame, we have probably 70 or 80 signs that the local parks department has put up. Uh, go this way, go that way. Be, be careful. Don't look over the cliff. Uh, don't fall over the cliff. Uh, watch your step. And, uh, you know, one of the things I have found personally is what I love about this particular platform is it takes the signs away. I don't have, I, I could make, when we did the, when we did the backpacker tutorial in Letchworth Woods on campus, there wasn't a sign other than at the entrance where I said, because uh, we were doing this as a field test, um, other than that sign, everyone literally, uh, they just, they got their app and then they walked through a beautiful set of, of uh, hardwoods it was fantastic not a not a sign to be seen and yet they were able to go through a complete tutorial on on how to be uh safe uh, in the woods and for backpacking it was pretty cool yeah yeah that that's getting to be a bit of a thing too is just the rebellion against signs there's certainly uh, a fear i think a significant number of people now that don't want to see as many signs in the backcountry and so because one thing we haven't mentioned, Russ, is that once you have your mission in your phone, you can play it completely offline. And that, that's very important to know. I mean, the reason you couldn't do Pokemon Go offline was because they wanted you to you know, enter your credit card info for an in-app purchase once you got sick and tired of having to go across town to get Pokeballs. So you'd eventually, hopefully, put in your credit card info and spend a buck 99 and, and buy some. 
Um, in this case, there are no, no in-app purchases. Players always play for free. They will never be required to provide credit card info. And so there's no need to be connected to the internet when you're doing your mission. So that's important. Someone is asking if preview mode works on Android and yes, this is fully compatible for iOS uh, or Android. So the preview mode will work. Um, you simply, when you open up, because there seem to be quite a few questions about it, is you just hold your finger on the uh, AOD logo until you see preview mode enabled and that will mean that the challenges will unlock. That isn't something we generally want to share with people because of course the goal of this is to get people out to the parks but um, that that's how it works. So we're coming up to the top of the hour I think Sherry. Um, I see that there are still quite a few more questions and we have provided uh, Russ's contract contact info. Um, now the cost. Um, I, I, hey Mary, I put the um, the link to the pricing um, in the chat box a couple different yeah, times. Thank you so much. I was going to yes. say it's all available yeah. on the website. Yeah. Mary, would you mind if I interject on that one too? Because I'm I'm not obviously I don't have any anything other than being an end user, so to speak. Um, one of the beauties of that I have found, uh, for instance with me with the university uh, i have actually working on trying to do a collaborative purchase so we can expand our programming opportunities of offering a variety of different missions and so as an example i am I'm, I'm working uh working with a professor from biology and working with a professor from environmental studies and even one of the librarians so it, it gives you a lot of flexibility and and uh, i don't know enough to tell you about this other than uh, contact uh, Mary's team and I'm sure they'll work with you as to uh, how they how they can best help service your needs. That's yeah. uh, it's pretty cool. And the pricing structure is designed to be really, really simple. You purchase a license for a year and that enables you to create unlimited missions for a year. So it's a simple sort of software license. So you can purchase a bronze, silver, or gold package. The bronze has 15 challenges, the silver has 20, and the gold has 25. And once you have set up your mission in your first year, your costs for renewal are about the same for all three packages. So the difference is just the level of customization, the artwork. Um, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you've got a flexible setup where you're wanting to be able to create missions and move them around, a bronze package is just fine for that. Um, if you're a 501c3, you get a 10% discount. Um, yeah, so all of that is available on the website, but I am going to have to um, get going here, Sherry. So is there anything else you, you would like us to comment on? And we certainly uh, would be more than happy to answer any of your questions. You can reach us through um, Agents of Discovery. Russ has put up his contact info. And uh, we, yeah, so we hope this is something that uh, if you feel it will be of use to you, we're certainly uh, here to answer more questions and get you uh, more information. I think most of the questions in the um, Q&A are about specific um, technological things rather than a broader question. Um, people are having some trouble with logins and things like that. So uh, they can reach out to Agents of Discovery is that the best if they're having issues with their own account? I see right there at the top, it says mission maker support is available via phone or email. Is that the best? Yeah. Oh yeah, we have we have full-time customer service support. Great. And that you, you can see on the screen in front of us actually, every page of the mission maker has a tutorial, which is a video that you can click on and watch. Or you can always just do Zendesk, like live chat through the help button and live chat with a, a CS rep. Um, please review the process to inject the challenge into the user's environment. I, you simply, oh, you just click publish. Once your, once your mission is created, you just publish it and it instantly will go into the app and play store. And maybe we'll close with that, Kendra, if you go back and just, you, you, you simply click the publish button and that will, will make your your challenges live, your, your whole mission will be live in the, the player app store. And then, 
yeah, if you go to the, there you go. Yeah, and just on the right, publish or unpublish, you just click that and that will, if you click publish, your, your mission will instantly go live. In fact, we published the Whirlpool one this morning. We're going to unpublish it right now. There we go. It's <laughs> off. So, it's not, so you won't be able to find it now. Um, I was on my way to Whirlpool State Park talking <laughs> on it. Well, New York State Parks, for some reason, turned that one off yesterday. So we just turned it back on just for an hour for this demo. But it's, that's, that's right there um, on your dashboard. You can just publish and unpublish. So super easy to do that. That's, and then you just refresh your list and it will show up uh, on your phone. So yeah, so it's nice to be able to get into the Play in the App Store easily and be able to be available on your players' devices. I don't think anyone goes for a walk around a park anymore without their phone in their pocket. <laughs> Yeah, and from a safety standpoint, it, it uh, someone brought up that they were concerned about safety uh, if they went alone. And I said, you know, it's the same thing as you know, taking a walk in the woods alone. You know, you have to, safety has to come first. Yeah. So uh, having a phone in your pocket's not a bad thing. Exactly. Right. And that's why people, okay. yeah, yep. carry them at all times. Exactly. Yeah. And so I see there's questions about the eye icon. Yeah, that, that eye is just part of the preview mode. Um, so I, I'm sorry we don't have time to answer more questions, Sherry, but, um, that, okay. <laughs> you know, no worries. It seems like the website is, um, very user friendly and set up so that there's plenty of help and support. So oh, yeah, I, I would suggest yeah. Sherry that if you happen to have an opportunity, um, should anyone have additional questions, uh, you have my email and, uh, you know, if I can't answer them, then I'll forward them on to, uh, Mary. Yeah, to absolutely. To hit the, that, that, that way we're, I hate not answering questions. That's the educator in me. <laughs> Is so. it possible to make a mission available only to one student? Yes. And that's called a formal education account, Craig. So if you are a teacher um, and you want to be, you know, set up as a formal educator account what that means is that your missions will only be available to your logged in players who would be your students and they would not be available to the general public and that was a feature we added a couple years ago just out of concern for student safety we didn't want players from the public coming to a schoolyard doing a mission so um, yes that option craig that's a very good question craig keller that that is available Great. Well, I want to thank I want to thank everyone. It's uh, some great questions, and I hope you uh, got a lot out of this. I know I every time I listen to Mary, I always learn more, which is pretty cool. That's why I like listeners. She's also I'm a half Canadian, so we get along pretty well. At least the <laughs> Canadian half of me. Um, yeah, I but I, I I do want to wish everyone you know stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks for coming on. Yeah, Russ and Mary, thank you so much. And Kendra, thank you also. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, I know this has been valuable to our community and uh, this will be recorded and available on our website. So if you have, you know, if you want to go back and take a look at it again, or if you want to share it with other people, you can certainly do that. Sherry, can I just, one last thing? It, uh, oh yeah. An educator. As I mentioned, Mary and I are doing a collaborative research with someone in, in uh, England a professor in England. If there's anyone out there, ed any educators out there that may have an interest in getting involved with us, please contact us. We, we, we're always looking for uh, some assistance. Am I right? Absolutely. Cool. Well, great. Everyone have a, a lovely day or evening or wherever you're at in the world. I know we had some people um, from Malaysia and Israel. And so thank you all for being here. Well, um, if they're Malaysians, abakabar, bye. Oh, and Israel, that's fantastic. We would love to have missions in Israel and Malaysia, that, that's great. I mean, this can be used anywhere on the planet. So more than, please get in touch with us and we'd be more than, than happy to answer any questions at all that you have. Great, thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day. Sherry, thank you so much. Yeah, you are welcome.